Last year, I decided that I wanted to store some of my firewood closer to the house for easier access during the coldest days. I wanted a storage solution that would hold at least two or three face cords of wood. I had the perfect spot behind the garage to construct a roughly eight foot by four foot firewood shed. As with many things, I made it more expensively and more elaborately than I probably needed to. For permitting and assessment reasons, I didn't want to construct something that would be considered a permanent structure, which is why I didn't dig holes and cement the posts in place. While practically speaking, this thing isn't exactly portable, uh, officially speaking, this firewood shed is considered movable. I'll mention that I didn't have the patience to shoot much video while I was actually building the thing. What I ended up doing was taking some photos and short videos of the project at various stages of completion. Uh, it's not perfect, but I think it'll give you a pretty good idea of how the whole thing is put together. I looked at a lot of firewood sheds online to get ideas for how I wanted to build mine. I took bits from different ideas here and there, and more or less designed my own version. I don't know much about 3D prototyping software, so I tend to plan out a lot of my projects in 2D from multiple angles. This allows me to get exact measurements and also know exactly how much material I need to get. So I started out by building the floor beams and posts atop these concrete footings. This ground is somewhat slanted and a little bit uneven, so most of the posts are slightly different heights to ensure the shed would be level on all sides. Proper construction practices would have me space the beams a little closer together, but being that they are all essentially doubled up, this thing is incredibly strong and sturdy. Then I added the floorboards. I used regular pine decking and left a gap of a couple inches between each board to allow some airflow around my firewood. Next was the vertical supports. I made each of the four corner supports by making an L out of two 2x6 two boards. Then I cut the tops at an angle and connected them all at the top with horizontal 2x4s. A couple more 2x4s added in and the framing for the roof is complete. Then I added center vertical supports to the front and back and used diagonal 2x4 braces between each vertical support and the roof frame. Besides adding structural support and rigidity, I think the diagonal supports look really nice. Because the outer dimensions of this thing were slightly more than 8 foot by 4 foot, I would have needed to buy two sheets of plywood for the roof, though I would only need a little bit of one of those sheets. So to save some money and some effort, I decided to make the roof surface out of planks instead. I ended up using six foot long wooden fence pickets since they're thinner, lighter, and cheaper than using something like decking. Since the roof will not need to support any weight except for itself and maybe some snow in the winter, these pickets were plenty strong enough. After attaching the pickets, I ran a chalk line and cut them straight on the front and back. To finish the roof, I added aluminum drip edge, roof felt, and regular asphalt shingles. Doing this part reminded me of something I previously realized many years ago. I really, really hate doing roofing work. Luckily, this was not a very big roofing project, so I managed to finish it without screaming or smashing anything. The last step in construction was to add the slat walls. I used fence pickets for this part as well uh, because they're light, they're cheap, and I think they look great. The reason I used an L shape for the vertical corner supports was because I wanted to attach the pickets to them in a clean and nice looking way. Uh, you can see that I also added an inner wall splitting the, the space of my shed into two halves. I'm not sure if this was necessary, but I liked the idea of having two separate sections that I could fill up with either different kinds of wood or wood that was at different stages of seasoning. It also seemed like there would be less of a chance of a firewood avalanche if uh, if I had a supporting wall in the middle. Finally, for the sake of landscaping and just general aesthetics, I decided to frame the whole shed in with landscaping timbers. I laid down weed control fabric and filled it over top with pea gravel. I went this route because it would be pretty annoying to try and get back behind and under this thing with a weed whacker uh, as the grass and weeds grew up. So I graveled over the whole area and the frame of landscaping timbers keeps it all contained. Uh, so then all that was left uh, is to haul over some firewood and start stacking. This right here is two face cords of wood. I'm able to fit the pieces of wood three layers deep into the shed. Uh, after stacking those two face cords, it's clear that I could still fit at least one more. A couple final things to mention. 
I used deck screws for every part of this thing rather than nails. Every beam, support, slat, and floorboard is attached with hex bit deck screws. The only nails in this entire thing are roofing nails for the shingles. I could have gone a lot cheaper and a lot faster if I used my framing nailer instead of screws, but I almost always choose screws because I want this thing to outlast me. Uh, nails work themselves loose. For instance, my privacy fence is built with mostly nails and I see new pickets working themselves loose every year. Secondly, I did not build this shed on cemented posts or tamped ground or with a substrate of sand or gravel. Because of that, and because this is a heavy shed that's holding thousands of pounds of firewood, I acknowledge that this entire thing could begin to shift or even sink over time. Now, it hasn't budged so far in the few months since I finished it, but it could. I may end up having to deal with that issue at some point in the future. If that happens, it'll probably involve emptying the shed and re-leveling with spacers of some sort. But that's a problem I'm not going to think about unless it happens. Because this is but a humble, non-permanent firewood storage rack, the worst that can happen if this begins to sink unevenly is my firewood could fall out. There's nothing especially catastrophic that can happen. The reason I mention any of this is as sort of a disclaimer about building a structure without a proper foundation. Understand the potential problems and do it at your own risk. So that's it. All in all, I'm really happy with how it came out and I would use this design again in the future if the need arises. Until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.